loving help is on the way in these battles of addiction when fear is chasing after me
possibly make and if you look at your life and you're wondering why is it not working out are you walking in the perfect will of the Father because Jeremiah 29 11 says I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord their plans to prosper you and not to harm you to give you a hope and a future His ways are good. His plans are good. And he wants the best for you. And he's got something special in store for you here this morning. So before you're seated, take a moment to look at the person to your right or look at the person to your left. Tell them good morning and you can be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Y'all having a great morning? All right, you guys all over the Super Bowl? All right, and I'm glad, you know, about three quarters of you were Eagles fans, and I didn't know if you'd come back this week. I am sorry for your loss. It was a great game, but it's always somebody, you know, it's sad, but I wish both teams could win, but it was a great game, and I just have no skin of the game, as you know, because my Vikings haven't won or played in the Super Bowl since Jesus was born, so I have... You know, it's just uh, it's sports, but it's great having you with us. But today, I believe we're in the best, best place we could be, and that's in church. And the reason I believe that is, is because God can cause us to win in things that this world says we're losers in. When the world says there's no hope, there's no way out, that it's a problem you're going to have for the rest of your life, it's things you're going to have to deal with, we serve a God that knows how to come into our lives and make it better. Amen. And that's why I'm glad you're here because everything about God is good. And that's what he says, every perfect and good gift comes from above. And that's why I like John 10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but God's come to give us life and life more abundantly. And I know sometimes theology can get, you know, hard to understand. And I just always go back to that one verse because the Bible says that Jesus was the word made flesh. So if you ever want to know what God is like, what Jesus is like, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you'll see that's all written about who Jesus was and what he did. 
And you'll never see Jesus. Did Jesus ever turn anybody away who needed help? No, never did. And so you just look at the way Jesus, who he was and what he was. And it's the enemy that wants to steal from your life and destroy. But God wants to do great things. And you put yourself in a place today by being in church where God can move in your life. And the only thing you have to do is ask him. And so those of you that are guests today, my name is Paul Fossley and I pastor Naples Church. It's a privilege having you with us. If you're watching online today uh, and you're here local, please come and visit us and, and be a part of the church here. Uh, I know you'd be a blessing to you. And so come and visit us. But one thing I ask is this, is come back more than one time. Come back a few times. You can't get to know us after one visit. We can't get to know you. So in the chair back in front of you, there's a welcome card. Please fill that out. As you leave here today, go through these middle doors. And on the right-hand side, we have a welcome center. We have people there to answer questions, show you around. We have gifts for you. But also something very, very important that start today, and it's small group sign-ups. You can do it online. Once they're full, they're full. Um, but if you're wanting to sign up today before they're open online, in the corner on this side of the church is where you can sign up for our small groups. And so you should be handed you know, a, a pamphlet there tells you all the different groups that are happening. Get involved because that is where life happens are in groups. And so make sure you do that. And another way we serve the Lord, as you guys know, is with our tithes and our offerings and our giving. And as the pastor of this church, all I can tell you is thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your involvement and your purpose in this church to see lives changed. And our whole vision this month and this year and what we're after is this is we just believe we all can be better. Amen. Amen. How many know everything in our life would be better if we're better? Hey, who do you spend the most time with in your home? This is not a trick question. It might sound like a trick question, but who are you with the most? Yourself. So just think how much better your life would be if we got better. It's amazing how it works, isn't it? So we're glad you're here and, and your giving makes it possible to get Jesus preached across the city. Last year we had over 1,200 people respond to giving their life to Christ and that's why we do what we do, everybody. Lives changed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this offering that people have given this week through online giving, text to give, uh, through mail and all the different ways that are possible to give in our day and age. And Lord, I just ask your blessings upon it because there's a principle in the Bible, what you sow, you reap. And Lord, we know this. As we take care of your kingdom, you look out for our kingdom. And so we're gonna put you first. And Lord, we know you bless the rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Naples Church. My name is Paul and I am so excited that you are here with us today. If it's your first time, take a look at the back of the seat in front of you and grab a welcome card. Take a moment to fill it out and bring it out to our welcome center at the end of our service today. We would love to say hi and get to know you a little bit better. We also have a free gift for you as well. Today we are launching the next semester of small groups. Small groups are a great way for you to get connected to the people you attend church with. We have men's groups, women's groups, and co-ed groups, and the groups meet all across Naples and a few in Ave Maria as well. Groups will fill up on a first-come, first-served basis, so after service today, head out to our lobby and find the group that's the right fit for you. Our next session of Growth Track will be March 5th at 8.45 a.m. Growth Track is the first step to being a part of a team here at Naples Church. You'll learn more about our pastors and the heart of Naples Church from Pastor Paul and Maria in a small group setting. Breakfast and childcare are provided, and you can sign up for Growth Track in the lobby today or online at NaplesChurch.com. We'll see you there. We've had a lot of new families joining us over the past few months, so we wanted to take a moment and share some tips to help you get in and out of the church parking lot easier. There are two entrances to our parking lot, the main entrance off of Immokalee Road and our second entrance off of Rivers Road. You can enter our parking lot through either entrance at any time. When you leave the parking lot, if you want to go east on Immokalee, then exiting through our main entrance is the way to go. If you need to go west on Immokalee towards 75, then exiting via Rivers Road is the best way to go because you can turn left out of that exit. And our parking lot team is always in the parking lot, so if you have any questions, you can always ask them. 
That's all we have for today. For more information about all of our upcoming events, you can always check us out online at NaplesChurch.com. Have a great rest of your day today. Well, we're going to continue to look at this series called A Better Me. And it's going to take different, you know, avenues and different thoughts along the way. So the title might change, but it's all about getting better. In, in the next few weeks, we have many th- events that are part of the plan to help all of us continue to grow spiritually, become more like Christ in our lives. And a couple of those events, and I, I know some of you are thinking, oh, pastor's talking about announcements. But honestly, right now, these aren't announcements. It's vision. It's vision for you, it's vision for us, it's to help, help all of us grow in this room spiritually and to get better. We have a marriage seminar that's coming up in a few weeks and just wanna encourage you to sign up for that, start getting babysitters for that, it's a two day event and it's just gonna be an incredible time together and so make plans for that. We uh, enjoy these immensely, growth track is in a couple weeks If you're new here and you want to say, what's the next step? Growth track is the next step. You can sign up for that. It's part of the beginning, the journey. It's not an end point. It's the beginning point. And so I encourage you to be a part of that. My wife and I teach that during Sunday along in ministry here. And it's just a great time for you to get exposure and knowing this is the purpose and plan for you in this church. Um, Next week, we have a very special guest coming in, a, a, a dear friend of ours. Uh, my wife and ours, he has been one of our, you know, mentors over the years. He was one of my Bible school teachers way back in when I was in Bible school in, in the 80s. And he'll be here this weekend, and I know he'll be a blessing for you. As, if you've been here, his name's Tony Cook. If not, you'll greet him next weekend. And then again, as I said, small groups in the corner up front. And so you all should have received one of these, and you'll see a map on the back where different ones are. We have them all over place, all over the place, different ones that you can uh, go to, different topics and subjects, so get involved. And those of you that are seasonal, I want to encourage you to, if you're here for any length of time, get involved, be a part of the church down here. It's important that if you're here for any length of time, you know, uh, also be a part here. I know you might live up there and that this is a vacation, but... I, I know in Bible, I know in the Bible that God doesn't take vacations. Amen? Amen. And so be a part. And enjoy. Get part of this church family down here. So I want to talk about love's legacy today and what your legacy is. Uh, if you were here last week, we started talking, letting you guys know that we're going to be celebrating 25 years as a church this year. And God has done just incredible things. But if we're going to continue to be strong as a church for another 25 years, there's one aspect of our vision is called Naples Church is a place where love works. And the legacy of love must be strong in our lives. And we're going to talk about why love has to be that strength in all of our lives. And love is the most important part of anything that we do in our homes, for ourselves, for this community, is knowing how and learning to walk in love with one another. Galatians 5, 6, and I'm going to read this a couple times today. In the New King James Version says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. In another, you know, the law, everything, it doesn't hold a candlestick to the one purpose, and that is this, but faith working through love. Faith working through love. You're going to hear that phrase a lot. But right out of the bat, you just understand this. Faith does not work where love is not present. Faith does not work where love is not present. And it's important to understand that. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. 
How many other things could God have put in there of three things that will last forever? But he made three things very clear. And he said one is the biggest, and that's our love. How we love. The word greatest in the Greek comes from the Greek word megas. And that just simply means something strong, mighty, or loud. Or loud. How many know this world is very loud about their sin? We need to be louder. Not like they're doing it by our actions. Our strength and loudness comes by what people see in our lives. How loud we live for Jesus. And it isn't our words that are loud, it's our actions that are loud. Because our actions should be the loudest, not our words. James 2.20 tells us, But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without works is dead. You know, works doesn't get you into heaven. You can't earn your way into heaven. I always think it's interesting how people think if they're good people and they work in soup lines and they give to the poor and, and they do all these different things that heaven's going to be their eternal home and it's not. Because the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ because the Bible tells us it's not by, it's by grace through faith we're saved, not of works. Because there's only one person who gets credit for salvation and that's Jesus Christ. We can't take credit for things to get into heaven based on what we do. Based on what we do. And the things that get celebrated down here won't get celebrated in heaven. If it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus Christ. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. I have missed you. I'm great to see you. And things celebrated up there aren't going to be celebrated down here. And vice versa. You know, there's a guy some of you might know by the name of um, Warren Buffett. Some of you might have heard that guy's name. He's kind of got a few dollars. And I think he said he was going to give most of his money away over his lifetime. Someone asked him about, you know, how your kids feel about that. And he said, I think they can live on a billion or two. But you know, if there was CNN in heaven and Fox News in heaven, you know, that wouldn't get any traction. Because what he's doing has nothing to do with getting people to heaven. It's cool what he's doing down here to help people, but how much is that getting people into heaven? How much is it getting life into people? God's word preached across this world. Because the one lady who gave less than a half a penny a little widow woman who gave a mite and Jesus was watching over the giving and she put in less than half of a penny and God said she gave more than everybody else because they all gave out of their abundance. She gave out of lack. And God put her on television. And in this world, our priorities are really not in the right order in life. But it has to start with the order of love. And our actions of love must be strong, great, and loud in this church. In Naples. That God's act of love is heard. What is love's strength? Matthew 22, verse 37 and 40. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with a little of your heart a little of your soul, and if you have a mind, maybe. What does it say? Any of that? What does it say? What's that one little word? Three letters. With all. Everyone say all. all. Come on, it's not a trick now. Y'all know what all means, right? In the Greek, you know what all means? 
all. I know it's, it's like, whew. but all. Are we really loving God with all of us? Not perfection. God knows none of us can ever do it perfect. But King David loved God with his whole heart, and he made lots of mistakes. But his heart was all towards God. And God had mercy and grace on his life. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second was equally just as important. And what is the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. How do we love ourselves, everybody? Any of you going to feed yourself after church today? Oh, three of you. Okay, cool. I didn't know we were doing a church fast. Because I'm not. I'm eating. Any of you clothe yourself? Any of you pamper yourself? Do you splurge on yourself? Do you make sure your needs are met? If you're sick, do you go get help? Are we doing the same back to others? Because it's as great as the first. How's our love? Everything is based on these two things. Everything. Faith strength is found in our love for God and our love for others. Faith's strength, faith's power is all found in our love for God and our love for others. How effective has our faith been? Faith and love are a team. You can't separate them. And if you do, it doesn't work. Faith and love have to work together. They're a team, and together they win, and they can do great things. There might be this quarterback some of you have heard of. I think his name's Tom Brady. Any of you ever heard? You know, just kind of a guy that might be known. But stop and think about this. If love is the center and faith is Tom Brady, could Tom Brady have done anything without a center? Nope. He wouldn't have been great. Every game would have been lost without a center. Because it's the center that gives the quarterback the ability to what he can do by giving him the ball. And faith is the power, I'm sorry, love is the power, the center is the love. That's the power that gives us the ability to do what God's asked us to do and to achieve great things. And without love in our lives, faith is hindered tremendously. Faith is hindered tremendously in our lives. Love's power and strength, again, comes through the working of love in Galatians 5, 6, but faith working through love. And working means effective energy and power. Faith will only be effective if love is connected to it. Faith will only be effective if love is connected to it. This is why we need to grow and we need to be better. This is why that last song, we need to make room for God, because when we make room for God, he pushes out anger. He pushes out bitterness. He pushes out disappointment. He pushes out hurts. Because if you're a mad, angry person, faith doesn't work. That's what corrodes the batteries of life. We can't be just mad at the world and think faith is going to work. Faith works by love, and love is the battery that powers faith's results. Love is the batteries that powers 
faith's results. How many of you, when you pray in faith, believing God to do something in your life, you want it to happen? I do. But you know, you can't pray for your spouse to to change and to make adjustments and get it right and then constantly rip them apart every day and talk down to them and bad about them. How can faith work and change a marriage when our actions aren't lining up with our love? Because it's love that makes our faith work. So if I want my relationships to work, if I want something to change in my life, then I have to love accordingly. Like some of you are struggling right now because you and your spouse fought the whole way here. And you're sitting there going, I hope they're listening. (laughs) Thank God they came today. They needed this message. And you're sitting there looking straight ahead, but you're smiling on the inside and saying, get them, pastor, sick them, get them. (laughs) You know, I think in 30 some years of, of being in ministry and everything, there wasn't one time my wife and I fought on the way to church. And I'm lying like the devil. But you know, when I'm down there and we fought the whole way to church and I'm lifting my hands and I'm getting ready to preach, I'm just like, Lord, you know how wrong she was. It's all her fault. (laughs) And when I get up there, thank you for anointing me because you got to do something with the woman you gave me. Thank you. Amen. (laughs) Yeah, that prayer doesn't work. You know that? But yeah, there was times when Over the years, I mean, come on, 30 some years of ministry, you're going to argue and and, and get on each other's nerves before church. But we're good at smiling, aren't we? (laughs) Pastor, how are you doing? It's great. (laughs) Life's good. It's going to be a good day today. But what is love? Love is the batteries. Remember, we don't see these flashlights very much anymore. But how effective is this flashlight without batteries? What if you filled these batteries with anger? And the love is the power. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a Toyota or a Bentley. Car won't go anywhere without a battery. It doesn't matter how good it looks on the outside. It's what's on the inside that shows up. Have you ever been surprised at some people? You find out all of a sudden one day they're like, they look like the perfect couple and this, that, and the other, and they're just falling apart. Because we're all good at putting on a show. But until love matches, until love's in us, and it's operating, love is the power that makes The battery. And I know this is a simple illustration. But we've all left batteries in something too long. And if you put your Christmas stuff away and forget to take the batteries out, and you pull them out the next year, they're green and busted and corroded and they're yucky. You see, that's what happens is this. Is all those things we need to get better at it corrodes the inside of us. It corrodes our love. It makes it less effective. And so our love has to match what our faith is and what we're believing for in our lives. So what, do you, what are some things that we want changed in our life today? What are things that we want to see altered in our lives today? Ephesians 4 tells us, and I'm going to close with this, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who's the head of Christ, 
for whom the whole body joint knit together by every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. The stronger the expression of love, the greater results of faith. So here's, did you catch that? That we're one body. We all have parts to supply each other. We're all joints, we're all ligaments, we're all part of the body. And the strength of our body is the strength of our love. And the growth in our lives comes from that love. So when you pray for something this week, you need to ask yourself, how are your actions responding in love to what you're believing for? Well, pastor, when they say sorry first, I will respond. Faith doesn't work that way. God loved us when we were sinners. God loved us when he, we hated him. God still was there for us. And in our relationships, in our lives, we have to be willing, as the Bible says, to lay down. There's no greater love than to lay down your life for someone else. And many times the breakthrough is when one person will just say, I'm sorry. I know it's simple, but it's a whole lot harder to do. Jesus just texted somebody to say, you're the one that needs to say it. <laughs> Did you catch that? All of you are hoping, Jesus, don't text me. No, no, no. The greatest force in your relationship is love. How many know we all can get better at that? Amen. Amen. I'm preaching to me as much as you. Because this is one thing every one of us needs to grow in. But here's what I know. The more we live in love, walk in love, and become like Jesus, the better and freer every single, the more free we all become. Because God works through faith because of our love. Amen. It's time to close. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Preach long enough. It's a simple message, but it's the most powerful message there is in the Bible. The Bible tells us that we have to come to God in faith. The Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith works by love. So as I'm going to just say a general prayer, I want you to be introspective and ask God, to, the Holy Spirit, to just show you things to begin to change. Something you can do today. Begin to let go of angerness. Begin to let go of fears. Begin to let go of hurts. Begin to start letting some things go and replace it with love. And when you do that, you will see miracles in your lives. And the greatest miracle that can ever happen is when Jesus becomes our Lord and Savior and we acknowledge him in our life as that. And in a minute, I'm going to ask everyone in here to pray a prayer with me. Because I want to know that, I, that you know. I want you to know that you know heaven is your eternal home. If you're watching online, the same is true. I want to know that you know that your sins are forgiven and God loves you. 
There's absolutely nothing anyone in this room has done or watching online. There's absolutely nothing so bad you've done that God will not forgive you, accept you, help you. Whether you've ran from him or whether it's your first time here in 20 years, God reaches out and get, touches our lives right now where we're at. And so I'm going to ask you a couple questions and I'm going to pray with you. But if you're here and you're not right with God in your life, I'm asking you to pray this prayer with us. If you don't know heaven's your eternal home, I'm asking you to pray with us. And some of you in this room, you have wandered from God. You have wandered. You, you used to be in church and you know you had prayed and you, you knew you were right with God at one time, but today you've gotten away, but now today you're here and you just say, Pastor, I need to get that right. So I'm going to lead everyone in a prayer. And then when I'm done praying, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you prayed on one of those things. Change begins today. Remember what I said last week? God can't work on what we don't acknowledge We have to acknowledge and then God can work. And so I want to lead everybody in this prayer. Those of you that are watching online, please pray this with us. Would everyone repeat this after me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today and ask for forgiveness for my mistakes and sins. I make a decision today to believe in your son, Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. My sins are now forgiven. Heaven is my eternal home. And I'm a child of God because I've made a decision to believe. In Jesus' name, amen. No one looking around, please. But if that was you and you say, I prayed that the first time, I got my life back right, I came home. You know, if you prayed that for the very first time and or one of those occasions, would you just lift your hand up so I can see it? Because it's so important that you let me know, those of you that are in this room, that it's like, yep, I am the one. I prayed that prayer. Awesome, you guys. Thank you. Who else? Awesome up there. You say, I, you know, because it's, I just, important. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you for those hands. Can we give a round of applause to those that lifted their hands? Amen.